So you have another haircut appointment that you missed? Yes, sir, I do. Please pardon my appearance. No problem at all. It's going to take a lot more than a haircut to make that face of yours easy to look at. No offense, of course. Oh, none taken. So you have another ministry we can monetize? Yes, sir, I do. I was thinking we monetize the Lord's Supper. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Wow. Let's do it. Really? Just like that? I mean... You don't need me to convince you or explain my plan. No, but I've been thinking we should do that for a long time now. It's a beautiful idea. But don't you think it'll be a bit difficult to convince people to pay for it? Well, actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just tell everyone that it's wrong to muzzle the ox when it treads out the grain. Wine and grape juice cost money, and filling all those little cups takes time and energy that needs to be compensated. The worker who does that and breaks up the crackers is worthy of his wages. I couldn't agree more, sir. Wine and grape juice aren't free, after all, so we have to find some way to pay for it so that the ministry of the Lord's table can be sustainable. And remember, people don't value things they don't pay for. And the more we charge people to partake of the elements, the more they'll value them as a means of grace. You're absolutely right, sir. But I really thought this was going to be a hard sell, with at least some pushback from you. Nah, I'm all in. I'm just surprised we didn't start doing this a long time ago. You know, we're doing it for the good of our people after all. And when they plop down 20 bucks every time we offer communion, which they should be giving anyway, They'll take it so much more seriously and appreciate it so much more deeply. That's exactly what I was going to say. And as the good book says, for anyone who eats and drinks without valuing the body, eats and drinks judgment on himself. That does sound like the Bible. And I would add that we're helping to fence the table from those who are unbelievers or who are tempted to partake in an unworthy manner. Absolutely. This is wisdom in its purest form, brother. And to make ourselves feel even better, we'll offer a discount to the poor. But are you sure people might not say this is something too sacred to commercialize? Listen, Buster, I'm going to need you to get all the way off my back about the S word. Oh, okay, let me get off of that thing. I mean, there might be one idiot out of a thousand that thinks that the Lord's table is too sacred. But... We'll just point out that the Bible never actually gives a technical definition of what's sacred and what's not. And besides, it's not like there's an explicit command in the scripture that says, thou shalt not sell the Lord's Supper. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, I mean, like, come on, people, read the Bible for once. Christians really can be extremely slow and biblically illiterate in this day and age. Yeah. Give me the good old days of the early church when people like Noah and Isaiah were selling the gift of the Holy Spirit together in order to finance their ministry. Uh, wasn't it Simon Peter and Simon the Magician who were doing that together? Oh, whoops. Whoopsie. But you know, now that I think about what you brought up about it being too sacred to monetize, maybe you could have a point? How do we resolve this tiny doubt that I have floating around in this mangled, minuscule scrap of conscience left in here somewhere? That's easy, sir. As the good book says, just follow your heart. What does your heart tell you? Just listen to it, and you'll know what's right. That does sound like the Bible. Give me a moment while I listen. Oh, that's nice. It tells me that I have divine wisdom and could never be mistaken. Amen. And what else does it say? Everyone who disagrees with me is just a hateful bigot. And I'm the sexiest man alive. So I guess that's it. My heart has spoken. I believe it. And that settles it. I guess it does, sir. <sighs> I guess we can rest assured that nothing could possibly go wrong with what we're so admirably trying to accomplish here. Did you hear that? Hey everyone, if that video made you curious, confused, or even offended you, you're not alone. So let me point you to some free resources that will help you dig deeper into these issues. Links down below. First, head on over to the DorianPrinciple.org and read or listen to the book, which is thoroughly biblical in its response to the commercialization of Christianity. Second, check out the website, copy.church, where you'll learn even more about these same issues, but from a different angle. And finally, don't miss Selling Jesus, which complements this channel. There you'll find a whole lot more to read and learn. And hey, if this video upset you, that's okay. But before you leave a comment, please consider thoroughly investigating the deep biblical and historical rationale behind everything on this channel. 
I think you'll be surprised. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope some of you will consider taking part in abolishing the Jesus trade and freely giving what we have freely received.